All right, this is a weird intro because I don't usually uh, videotape my living room, but um, our old television died and it was not a flat screen. And it was in a big armoire. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. This thing right here, uh-huh, yeah. It's big, it's ugly, it's really dark. So this is sitting in my living room now because it needs to find a home. Um, but we're also on a tight budget, so I need to do something with all that stuff. Basically, I need to put together a TV console. So I have been on the hunt at various thrift stores to find a dresser that I can take apart, chalk paint, and turn into a TV console. So come join me in my little project, which is turning into a big project, but a really cool project. So not only am I the urban domestic diva, I am a thrifty, crafty domestic diva. So come join me. Okay, hey everybody. Um, <laughs> this is just such a weird video. Anyway, um, that intro was filmed in 2018. So it's 2021 and this cabinet that I found at the thrift store for $14.99, except it was less because I think I had a coupon, has been sitting in the basement for that long. So yes, even the urban domestic diva has projects that don't get done. So don't beat yourself up. We're all in the same boat. We're all just trying to do everything while making sure we have clean socks. So um, we've been cleaning out and rejiggering, rejiggering the basement this weekend. There's a big pile of toys right there that are going somewhere else. So anyway, um, my husband and I are like, let's get this thing done. Um, so here's the thing. I had videotaped the mid work that we were doing on this piece to show you how we were going to turn this into a TV console. This is like just a, a small cabinet. Um, cannot find that video. So I sort of need to catch you up on what we've done and then, you know, what, what we're going to be doing moving forward. Um, I showed you a, a picture of what the cabinet looked like in the thrift store. And so first things first, when you take the piece home, you take the, um, the doors off, right? And you take the hinges off and you save your screws. You can keep them in a little Ziploc bag so you don't lose them. And so that's number one. And then we're gonna have to take these off as well, Any all your fixtures. Now, if you plan on keeping these fixtures, again, keep them in a Ziploc bag so they don't get lost. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna actually replace those fixtures. So keep that in mind too. We did a little shopping in our two year <laughs> period and found these really cute little star handles. So we're gonna use those. Um, before we cleaned it or did anything, we wanted to deal with some carpentry. So I'm going to show you um, kind of what the missing video would have shown you, which is if you're going to turn this into um, something for TV, there's going to be a lot of wires and the wires need to come from behind into whatever you're going to put in here. So I'm going to show you how we used a big drill bit and drilled big holes in the back on where we thought we needed it. There was also a shelf up here and we measured it and it wasn't um, high enough for the stereo. So my husband pulled it out. He put wood putty in the, in the screws and he was going to move it up and keep the shelf. Now over this two year period, he has decided we don't need this shelf, which means I probably could have done this two years ago and finished it. But anyway, let's just, we'll just table that. Anyway, so I'm gonna show you what's been going on here. We sanded, so now that the, there's not gonna be a shelf in here, we sanded the sides so it's nice and smooth. So when you get your piece, if there's any holes, if there's any scratches, or if you're pulling some things out and it's leaving some holes where screws were, use putty, let it dry, make sure it's level. Um, sometimes putty, when it dries, you know, it, um, it sets in. So you might have a, still a little space to keep it flush. So you might have to put a little bit more. 
and then you sand everything smooth. So that's what you do. And because of the sanding, don't do any cleaning yet because you're gonna get sick, like sawdust all over. So we haven't really wiped this down yet. I'm gonna show you the inside of what, what we did. So you can see here we sanded this and there was, there was a hole right there. We put a little putty in. Um, I'm gonna sand the back a little bit. I have to get in there. And then you can see where we put two really big holes. These holes were not there before because this is not really meant for television, a television console, but we need it to be. So you can get those big drill bits at the hardware store. So once we're finished sanding, we're going to wipe this down. Another thing, there was an obnoxious sales sticker from the thrift store and the adhesive was sticking because it had been here for two years. And a really great trick, even amounts of canola oil and baking soda and use a paper towel and I spread it around and let it sit for about five minutes and what it, it helped release all of it. And now look, there's nothing, nothing at all. And if there's any oil residue, when we wipe everything down with some dish soap, it'll go away. Okay, so now you're caught up. I'm gonna finish sanding that back. And then we're gonna wipe this thing down with dish soap and get going. Okay, we, we rinsed this with some uh, mild soap and water and it's dry. It's all set to go. So you just, first step is the chalk paint and you just need a $2 chip brush, just a cheapie. Do not get swindled into getting special chalk paint brushes. This does just fine. And chalk paint is paint that's got plaster mixed in. So that's what gives it a nice soft um, kind of finish. And it also self levels, which is nice. You don't have to prime anything. You just, you know, put a couple coats on and, it, and it's self leveling. So um, this is Folk Art Home Decor. They came out with a line a couple years ago. Um, Home Depot's got a couple. You can pretty much find this anywhere. So we're going to go with a Tuscan red on the bottom and a dark chocolate on the top where the black is. So what I do, it's really not fussy. There's, there's really no secret to this. It's very easy. Um, I get an old cup. Make sure you know you shake, shake the paint really well. And I'm gonna start at the top and then I'm gonna do the sides because then I can, I can manage the edging better, keep it cleaner. I don't wanna tape it, I'm gonna try not to tape it, but if you're really concerned about your painting skills, go ahead and you know, once you do the top, maybe do some taping to do the bottom. And chalk paint, a little goes a long way. And what I do is start at one end, and I kind of want to make sure you're seeing this, guys. So I'm going to scoot this over. OK. Um, you go against the grain and then with. Against the grain. Because you can see the grain's going this way. And you can always thin this with a little water if you're feeling like it's too thick or it's been sitting a little bit. So after you go against, stroke width. That's your cadence, against, with, against, with, okay? Easy peasy. Now, you're gonna look at this and go, wow, that looks like poop, Flora. It's gonna look like poop. Your first coat always looks like poop. Do not worry. You put that second coat on, it self levels, it evens out, looks really great. Usually I don't even go for a third coat, but sometimes if there's gonna be a lot of wear and tear on the piece, and actually this is probably going to, because it's our TV console, I might do a third coat on the top. Or if it's not, if it's a dark color and you're doing something lighter on top, you know, it's up to you if you need that third coat. But 
All right, I'm gonna cover this top, and uh, after we're done with it, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so the top and the edges are painted for coat one. I like to wait an hour in between coats, so we're gonna wait on getting a second coat up here, but in the meantime, I'm gonna start working on the inside of these with my red, because why, why not, right? It's also great that I did this first because I did get sloppy on the edges, but it won't matter because I'm gonna go in with the red and kind of clean all this up. That's why I did the top first, so that's kind of a neat trick. Okay, I have another chip brush to use to get the red going. So I went in and followed that same cadence, you know, against the grain, with the grain on the inside. And um, by the time I got done with all the insides, I was close to an hour on the top. So the top's gonna be ready in a sec. Um, still got about 15 minutes left on it, which means I'm gonna do the two doors. And I'm gonna start with the backs and the edges and let them sit and then do the fronts and take your fixtures off, like I said. All right, it's been an hour on our top. Time for our second coat. So I'm gonna pour a little bit in my cup again. Same, same cadence, okay? Against and with. And you're gonna see a big difference. Okay, that's our top with two coats. My, my little helper is filling in holes, and I think we're going to put a third coat on the top. Let me show you the inside. Inside's looking good, but to be thorough, we're going to do a second coat on the inside. And then we're going to start working on the outside. All right, so that's our third coat on the top. Looking really good. There's still some wet areas. Inside, still wet areas. Um, but started our first coat on the outside. And our cabinets got a second coat. And while we were doing that, we did our edges as well. So we're gonna wait an hour, flip these over, do the tops of the cabinet doors, and get our second coat on the outside. And we are gonna be rocking. Um, so we're waiting an hour to get our second coat on the outside. Um, here's a happy trick. Rather than paint um, the paintbrush being washed with water, wrap it tightly with saran wrap and put it in the refrigerator And because um, you're gonna be using it again in an hour. So um, it'll just, it just saves you time. So that's where um, my husband just took the brushes to the refrigerator and we've got the timer set for an hour. Next phase of our little adventure is distressing. So you don't have to distress your piece. You know, I, you can leave it as is at this point and then wax it. Now, my husband and I talked and he wants me to distress it up a little bit. So it's really more of an art form and basically you're just aging certain areas to give the piece kind of a vintage shabby chic look. So what I do is I strategically look at where there would be normal wear and tear. So usually around the knobs, right? That would be a place where some wear and tear would happen. So let's focus on the knobs just so I can show you what I do. Now some people wait to distress after they've waxed. I don't like doing that. I like to distress first and then wax it and be done. That's the way I do things. And so I have a couple of um, pieces of sandpaper with various grit, meaning the roughness of the sandpaper. This is a rough grit and it's very, very coarse. This is going to be more aggressive. And then you can take your finer grit, this is a very fine grit sandpaper, and sort of smooth it out. And 
And what's going to happen is you're going to see whatever the color is underneath. And that, there was a smoky blue color to this piece, so that's what's going to come through. And I have this um, damp rag and you just kind of wipe away the debris and it kind of helps to see where you are with your aging. So this needs definitely some more. But that doesn't surprise me because we had three coats on there. This only had two, so. So it's actually looking really great. So it's got that nice little bit of wear on the door, around the knob. So it's gonna look pretty cool. So, you know, I go first with that really rough grit and then I kind of go in with the finer one and even things out and get a little bit more subtle areas and blend it. So keep going. After you've gone over it with um, a damp cloth, I also like to go over it again with dry just to make sure all the debris is off so we're in the waxing phase which means we are in the home stretch of our project and the waxing part of this is almost you're you're basically sealing the piece and wax is um, the way that old furniture makers used to seal their furniture and they also used chalk paint and what wax does it has to cure for about i believe a week um if i'm wrong someone correct me in the comments below um <clears throat> so you can't do anything too crazy with your piece until it's cured but once it's cured it does seal the paint and gives it some protection um so it's as if you were shellacking the piece, if you will, or something like that. So um, there's a few brands. This is um, Home Decor. They came out with a whole line. And you don't need a lot. And I have sort of a, an old plastic plate. You probably, if you've seen any of my chalk paint videos, you've seen this, this plate. Um, and here's a chalk paint brush. So I got this on Amazon. I would recommend that you get a wax brush. So where I told you, you don't need really anything fancy for the chalk paint, just get like a $2 chip brush at Home Depot, you're fine. This is like $15 or so, and it's round. It almost looks like a stencil brush. It has a flat, flat surface. Then you're going to, let's get started actually. So you're gonna, a little goes a long way. Let's put a little on your plate. You take your brush and you just kind of tap it and then move it so that you have the excess kind of moved over here. So you just have a little bit. I'm gonna grab my cabinet door so you can see what I'm doing here. And basically, with your flat surface, you just kind of massage it in. And then, when you're done, 
work with the grain. So massage with the grain. So go through your whole piece and wax it up. It's really very easy. So a little goes a long way. And this is clear. You can get wax in different colors. And in fact, I do have a brown wax here. So if you, did, if you wanted to age your piece um, using brown wax or different colored waxes, even white wax, you could do that too. So versus sanding away some of the paint, which is what I prefer to do. Um, if you wanna see what brown paint, brown wax can do, I have a, um, a chalk paint mirror uh, upcycling project in my craft playlist, you can check that out. Um, brown wax is nice when you have a lot of detail work and you can get the brown wax in there and then rub it off and the brown wax kind of stays within the filigree of your piece. So that's how I use brown wax. But anyway, once we get this all covered, then we'll talk about letting it set and cure and um, putting our piece together and finally in the living room after two years. Okay, so we are done waxing this bad boy. And what we need to do now is let it sit overnight and it will be dry to the touch and we'll be able to buff it and put our fixtures back on um, and then we'll move it into place. But don't do anything too crazy with it for about seven days, like I mentioned before. Um, I checked my numbers just to make sure I gave you the right time frame and yes, uh, it's not totally cured until seven days later. So when you're putting out back your fixtures and, and setting it back in place, just be really careful. So anyway, um, we're gonna let us overnight and we'll check on it in the morning. So the final step, you can see we have a nice sheen to our wax, but what's nice to sort of help it cure and get a nice soft finish is to buff it out. So just kind of rub it gently. And I've got just an old rag from some old sweatpants, something that's uh, lint free and, and clean. And just kind of little elbow grease, just buff out your piece. That's it. We'll put this all together and you can see how it looks. Adorable. It turned out so cute. We're done! Yay! Two years later and we have an amazing TV cabinet for super, super cheap. Isn't it cute? Look at this. The handles, you know what? I made peace with the handles. I got them and I wasn't sure I liked them. I do like them. They're, they're cute. Um, Anyway, I hope this inspires you to, you know, upcycle something that maybe you were tired of or you found at a thrift store or uh, you were going to throw away. Chalk paint is so easy, so forgiving, and you can do some amazing things with it and give it some really great textures and, and vintage looks. So um, thank you for joining me today on Fridays with Flora. I'm gonna end it here. We are not going to show you in this video how this all looks in the living room because there's a lot of wiring and craziness that needs to happen, which we're going to save for tomorrow. If you wanna see how it looks in the living room, all prettied up, um, check us out on Instagram. We're going to be um, showing a fancy picture probably tomorrow at some point. So follow me on all social channels. I'm 
everywhere. Uh, so um, follow me there and specifically follow me here. If you subscribe down below at that button, you can stay up on all the fun that we do here at the Urban Domestic Diva channel. Cooking, gardening, crafting, you name it, we do it here. We keep things creative and fun so that we can help you be creative and fun too. Anyway, Stay safe, stay well, stay warm. Half the country, or more than half the country, is under snow. And uh, thoughts and prayers go out to Texas. Hope you guys are staying warm, stay safe. Um, I don't know, I hope, I hope it warms up for you guys quickly. Um, my thoughts and prayers go out to all of you guys. So I know you're not used to the cold like we are up here in Chicago. So hang in there, guys. Everybody, it's only like 30, 30 some days to spring, hang in there. I heard uh, a mating call today, I think a cardinal, different bird call, so spring is coming. So just hang in there, guys, hang in there, we're almost there. Anyway, see you in a couple weeks.